I got a call from an American venture fund capitalist called Jim Swartz telling me about a film they were making. It's called Icarus. And now he had landed in the big middle of the largest doping fraud in the history of the world since the Eastern German discovery. Over the phone, he asked me, hey, Johan, we have to start something together. We have to start fair sport in protection of whistleblowers in sport. Jim and the team around Icarus had protected Gregory Rochenko for already one year. And the pressure was just increasing on the client and the film team. Jim told me there were nowhere to get support for whistleblowers in sport, and that Gregory was not the first one. He alluded very well known of the Stefanos. I left the fight for doping-free sport already in 2003, after my term at the VADA Foundation and Executive Board was terminated, and I focused fully on developing right to play. Getting a call in 2016, understanding that the situation in the anti-doping world had not improved significantly, but seemed even to worsen uh, over the years, scared me a bit, but also challenged me to work with Jim and our fellow board member, Ed, Louisa, and David, to form and create Fair Sport. Fortunately, we also found Claudia Bockel available to be our executive director a great leader who led the IOC Athletes Commission uh, in their pursuit of clean sport for athletes. We believe that clean sport for athletes is critical, and we should strive to make it a reality. We owe that first and foremost to our children coming after us to want to participate in a fair sport. But we also secondly own this to the heroes before us who won clean and created the best integrity of sport. Sport is an incredible arena and so for our society to mobilize and to lead more democratic, truthful, and honest society. And we have to protect it. Now, sport is also a reflection of society. And we have the same problems and temptation as in real life. Therefore, we have to create systems that protect clean athletes from cheaters and corrupt leaders in sport. So fair sport vision is that sport respects athletes' rights and voices and are free of corruption and coercion. Well, we started first in protection of whistleblowers and of course, the, what happened to Gregory Rochenko. We created this organization. We found that it was incredibly difficult for active athletes to speak up against inside the system. It's against their own national organization or international federation. It's almost impossible, as, a, as they feel, well, rightly or not, that they will be excluded from future competition and eliminated from their own possibility to achieve their dreams. You hear athletes at the time saying, I focus on myself and try to limit the information around me about doping so don't distract me. There's nothing I can do about it anyway. Um, and and I can only do things to improve my own performance. We believe this has to change, and that more athletes have to speak up. We at Fair Sport, therefore, work on empowering athletes, both individually and collectively. We believe in the best interest for clean athletes to stand up and protect their own sports. We also found this out through a survey over 2,000 athletes answered that they felt their voices were not heard, and that the sport leadership who represented them was mostly corrupt and not trustworthy. They also said they would support others who speak up against people who break the rule in sport. Adrian Morin here today will talk much more about this and we will update from the WADA's first global athlete forum held in Calgary the, earlier this month. There's been four cases, well-known cases, only discovered due to whistleblowers. It started with the Balco case, back in 2001, where there was a tipster called Trevor Graham, and kind of a disgruntled coach who wasn't paid, who tipped about Marion Jones and Tim Montgomery. And we know the outcome of that. Lance Armstrong is probably the biggest case, which was first come into investigation with Floyd Landis reported to the Federal uh, Bureau, and Jeff no Novakitz from FDA started an investigation. But it never ended or it didn't end before our friend Travis 
target, now they call the anti-doping sheriff, uh, finally got the truth to the end. <clears throat> At the same time, we learn about the Stefanovs and their persistent effort to bring attention to the prevalence of doping in Russia. Hadjo Seppold investigated information when no one else would. That resulted in a thoroughly documented IC investigation focused attention on Gregory Rodchenko and the role of the Russian doping system. Rodchenko, feeling threatened because of his much deeper knowledge of the secret Russian doping program, he defected to the United States. Brian Fogel documented Rodchenko information in Icarus, and that forced Vala to appoint Professor Richard McLaren uh, to investigate Rodchenko allegation, leading to his meticulously documented report. The IC reports, McLaren's reports, finally forced a response from sport governing bodies, communities. We would not have known any of this if it wasn't for the Stefanos hadn't persisted. In other words, the no permanent existing system to deal with these massive corruption issues on the scale that they require. All of the responses, Hajo, IC, Icarus, McLaren, had been ad hoc either external to sport governance or driven by media pressure. It has also become evident that clear the sport itself has very little capacity or interest to follow up on these cases, and even more interesting to be seen to be complicit in covering up each of them. We know about the IAAF case and now possibly under investigation in the IBU. Despite this exposure, of corruption in sport that we have witnessed over the last several years, we see very limited change in sport governance and sport organizations' interest to eliminate corruption in sport. We see there is, that economics and politics of international sports competition creates an environment where corruption is inevitable. Today, there's an enormous amount of money flow through the hands of those who control events in the sense that they can direct those funds everywhere they wish. Sport governance is multinational, creating obstacles for any individual country to exercise adequate control. There's an inherent imbalance between the power of athletes collectively and those who control sports governance. Athletes are generally unorganized, have limited periods in which they compete, and are dependent on the governance institution for the right to complete and are under the immediate control of coaches, trainers, and medical personnel. And those who control sports governance are in it for the long run, the terms, and are free uh, for making alliances and deals with very little, if any, oversight and accountability. Just recently, a president of a well-known international federation got elected for the sixth time. I believe Donald Trump would like that rule. That's an American pun. I hear he left. <coughs> Good. <laughs> Due to the discovery of all these facts, we at Fair Sport have evolved to helping eradicate corruption in sport through good governance and democracy, and help promote and support an independent and transparent anti-doping system in the world. We cannot compromise with corruption. Despite all of the sordid details that we have exposed over the past four years, the response for governance institution has been timid. Russia, example, has never been fully ac accountable for what it did. Athletes who were victimized have been ignored. And actually, there's more than 10 athletes who never will see the medal they deserve from Sochi. The system, if you can call it that, for investigating and unjunctivating issues of systematic cheating are weak, fragmented, and erratic. The IOC, they created two more commissions to investigate the same facts, which was presented by McLaren. And still today, the international federations are sitting on over 350 cases presented by WADA from the LIM system, which has not been announced or, or investigated. The CAS decision that exonerated 28 athletes IOC had banned in FARS, where there has been found many contradictory issues in the two presented decision related to the individual athletes. Uh, and I hope Professor McLaren will present some of his views on those, uh, the, uh, the cost findings. But I think one example is just worth exploring. The cost review panel did not agree with the multiple team marks found on the bottles and the scratch marks. Uh, they disagreed that the multiple team marks 
was not enough evidence that there was a manipulation of the bottles. The lab directors in Lausanne who tested the bottles found that 36 of the 127 Russian bottles have multiple T marks and they're part of a swapping of the urines. In addition to those bottles, the lab tested 44 other bottles, which was not Russians. 22 was randomly selected, and 22 came from the Beringer company. And they were tested to find multiple team marks, and on, there were none on these bottles found. Kaas explained that there could be other reasons, meaning a random act to be actually finding team mark, multiple team marks on the bottles. So what's the chance to find then 44 bottles with multiple team marks due to a random act? We would say there would be the same numbers of bottles. With how, how many will you find of the 44 with multiple team marks? Well, we calculated by mathematicians, statisticians in the Norwegian uh, University of Oslo University, and he said that there's actually one out of two and a half million chance that the Russians was random act of the 36 hours. So one and a two and a half million. For the Norwegians in this room, they know that in Norway, the lotto chance, like being a lotto millionaire, is one in five million chance, okay? So the Russian team should come to Norway, and there have been 18 lotto millionaires. Uh, <laughs> there would have won. We believe there is a lot more to be done. Who gets cheated? We, the people, get cheated. Not the sport federations, not the teams around the athletes, it's the people, the people who support and work in sport. We are the public who get cheated. We need to find ways to be able to, f to create new rules that we see that the society can be protected and that clean athletes can be protected. We can generate public or get the financial gains to sport to our interest, and we get cheated really, really bad. I'm very excited that today my brother will speak later in the conference, a prosecutor in financial crime unit in Oslo. I will put this issue and touch on this issue and present he, in his presentation. We at Fair Sport thoroughly support the transparency, the independence, and the ethical, strong governance with separation of power in the anti-doping world. We need to do this for our children uh, and for the future of sport. Thank you.